Ephesians 6, 11 says to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. It is this spiritual warfare we are all engaged in that Bill Harris examines this week. While discussing his latest series, Total Surrender to God, Bill illustrates how we are to commune with God in spirit in order to further equip us to fight this spiritual war. Spirit and soul. To me, to most people, what's the difference? They they seem to be the same, but in our four part series that you're uh, going over that you're discussing with it, which is total surrender to God, you say, no, there's, there's a difference between the two. Right. In, in Hebrews, God says he divides asunder the spirit and the soul. And then he talks about the marrow and the joints. Mm-hmm. That's the body, of course. So he makes a distinction. And I think we have to understand the, the difference between the two is the soul. That is the, uh, the essence of who you are in terms of personality and the mm-hmm. like. But the spirit is that part of you which you commune with God with. In fact, I would put it this way, Zach. You are a spirit, not just that you have a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul and they live in a body. And so God made you in his own image and it's spirit like spirit. Our spirit communes with God and and, and vice versa. When God deals with us, it first starts in our spirit. Now, the soul and the body get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, we we may tear up and cry with our emotions and things like that. Or we may raise our hands and give him worship. Uh, We may want to say hallelujah or something of that (laughs) nature. But it starts with the spirit. And and when our spirit connects with God's spirit, that's fellowship. And that's a relationship. And that's intimacy. And so even they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Think of the people who go to church and their spirit never connects with God. We haven't had worship. You might have listened to a nice service, but you haven't really connected with God Mm -hmm. unless your spirit connects with him. On part of your your series that I've seen you, uh, you're actually an artist. Most people may not know that. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) poor one, very poor one. (laughs) You do some drawings in your teaching Uh and you've shown the different elements, the body, the soul, the spirit, Mm -hmm. and how in uh, in an incorrect uh, life, perhaps the body is the largest element. It's being fed the most. Mm -hmm. But the spirit, through your teaching, you tell the spirit is the most important to feed that and that'll carry over. Because once you are surrendering to God in terms of the spirit, well, the total surrender, but the spirit will begin to take its direction from the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. And where does he dwell? He dwells in your spirit, your human spirit. And then that spirit begins to have influence and to dominate the soul, your mind, your will and emotions. And then that will spill over to the body of your five senses so that you will behave. Hmm. That's the way it works. Right. And uh, we have to, it, it's, and I try to make it as simple as possible so people can digest it. It's the word of God. And when we digest the word of God, take it in, meditate on it, confess it and put it into action. That is put legs on our faith. Then yeah. we realize results. And is that where we start? Do we start in the word? Do we start in that yes. fellowship with God? Yes. That, that communion, just like you would do uh, in your normal devotion. If you're starting your day in the morning with God, you want to spend time in his presence, letting your spirit and his spirit connect. And that gives you the guidance for the day. It, it gives you a mindset, Zach, yes, yes. that helps you through your day. Otherwise, we're moving in human strength. And so many of us, despite the fact that we have access to God's spirit, we're moving on our own human strength. Hmm. That's not necessary. Yes. So we've talked about the body, we've talked about the soul, we've talked about the spirit. Part four, spiritual uh, warfare. Yes. Maybe a surprise title to some, maybe an element that we don't often think too much about, yeah. but we are in a war, a spiritual war. We are, and let me put it succinctly, the devil is out to get us. Yes. And we must understand in total perspective here that he is a defeated foe. Christ defeated him at the cross, but that doesn't stop him from trying to tempt us. The warfare is in our resistance mm. to him. That's where the warfare comes in. A lot of times we think that the warfare is well in the elements in the heavens. Well, there is a warfare there too. But the number one thing that God wants us to bring is ourselves under submission to him because the greatest war comes from within. For many of us as Christians, the greatest battlefield we have is the one between our ears. Absolutely. Satan trying to mess with our minds and trying to distort our will or distract our will and trying to mess up with our, our emotions and the like. So. Even, even James said, you know, from whence come the warrings and the fightings? Don't they come from within? Mm. And there's an old African proverb that says that if there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do me no harm. <laughs> so when we get ourselves together with God, there's no enemy out there in the elements that we can't face with God on the inside. Christ within the hope of glory. Yes, yes. And so the takeaway is if we're feeding our spirit, we're feeding our soul, 
ultimately feeding our body in yes. an appropriate way, right. we're able to fight that spiritual war. That's right. That we can look within, mm -hmm. we can know what the enemy is trying to do and That's prevent right. that. You mentioned uh, words there briefly, or thoughts rather. Mm -hmm. How crucial our thoughts are and the effect that they can have on our mindset, yes. our outlook on life, yes. and our overall perspective. You are what you think about. Yes. This is why the Bible tells us to meditate. When we meditate on God's Word, meditation is the opposite of worrying. Mm -hmm. You ever have a thing that you're worrying about and you think about it constantly? Mm -hmm. Well, when you meditate, you think about what you're meditating on constantly, about the things of God. If you're having trouble in one area of your life, let's say it's trouble in your finances, think about those scriptures where God t promises to bless us financially. If it's a thing where you've got a physical challenge in your health, think about the scriptures where God promises good health and the like. So whatever you're dealing with, get those scriptures meditate on them and then confess them. That is open your mouth and express them. And there's faith going out with that and it really helps us in the long run to overcome. Uh, yes. And so maybe some encouragement today that we can provide within the spiritual warfare, acknowledging that there's going to be battles lost, that daily yes. we're going to have to fight something that seems overwhelming. But there is encouragement there, and, and ultimately we know who is victorious. Absolutely. We are on the side of the victor, yes. and that's why Christ has asked us to be with him. When you think about the fact that he went down to hell for you and me, suffered in hell, then went over to the devil and said, the keys to death and hell, turn mm. them over. <laughs> Christ now has the keys to death and hell. The devil doesn't have the keys to his own home. And Christ is, you know, keys represent authority. Yes. He has given us authority to be overcomers. The devil doesn't want us to know that. He wants us to run and hide and scoot behind our, 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 our frailties right. and our weaknesses Power in the light. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So we have to recognize, and sometimes we have to do what David said. David, David said this, let the weak talk to himself. Mm -hmm. Let the weak say, I am strong. You know, there's nothing wrong with talking to yourself like that. I talk to myself all the time. I get better answers. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously, you talk, you talk to yourself and you say positive things from the word of God that help propel you in life, really. <laughs>